Hey, welcome back to the Gratu Orloff television program. March 4th, 2021, episode 313. Um, going through the closet here, I found a kind of a treasure trove of some of my old cartoons and um, other kinds of weird paper items, and I thought I'd show them to you. Um, let's see what we've got. I'm just kind of going through the, these for the first time in many years. Um, interesting. Well, this Mighty Marvel Order Form um, I wonder if this came with I, I, I don't think this came with the foam uh, envelope, but you can see the um, stuff that they're selling. Spidey Squirt Gun, $1.78. Spider-Man Doll, $3.98. See how they're... I keep telling you, they weren't called action figures back then. They called them dolls. They're talking about the Mego figures, you know. But, um... Maybe I need to... Anyway, this is, um... This is kind of a cool thing. So this is from the 70s for sure. <clears throat> so I need to kind of organize this stuff a little bit. Here's um, this uh, newsletter, Kitchen Sink Pipeline. They used to give this away free in the at comic stores. This is from... Uh, November of 1990. Yeah, they were, um, this box, I've got one of these boxes in the closet, this Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, um, uh, thing. Anyway, you know, I don't know if anyone saves this stuff, but, you know, it gets old enough, I guess it becomes interesting. Here's, um, flyer for the third issue of Xenozoic Tales. The other side promotes the spirit. And I've got um, two copies of that. Here's a flyer from bookstores when the book of the subgenius came out. And this is kind of cool. One is this is from 1989. The San Antonio Comic Swap Meet. I don't know if any of you went to this at the Econo Lodge. Possibly the Crypt Keeper of Castle Hills was there. Or Chad Miller, if you were, I'd, I, you know, I could make a photocopy of this, and it would pretty much look like the original, if you wanted it to frame or something. Let's see what Kirk Allen is saying. Why this is ridiculous? This stupid story has three Phantom Zone criminals breaking up. I'm sorry, sneaking up behind me and catching me off guard while I'm reading a comic book. Ha! Huh, what absolute trash! As if I could ever be taken by surprise and. These, um, anyway, and then here's one for the Fort Worth comic book swap meet. So, this guy, Comic Book John, I guess, produced these um, cool flyers, and uh, looks like I saved at least a couple of them. Oh, this next thing I saw, um, uh, Silver Edge Dave was showing off one of these, and he was really proud of it. And, uh, I, and I thought, I know I've got one of those. So here it is. This is um, a little mini poster for this mid-1980s Submariner comic. 
It looks like I used to have it on the hanging. So little little corners are gone. Here's a Rocketeer promo flyer. I've got a couple of that. You know, it's just inside. It's just um, from Comico Attractions. Let's say I, I get three of them. Now I've got this Punisher poster from. 1987. Oh, this is when they were reprinting the Green Lantern, Green Arrow stories in a prestige format. From Diddy O'Neill and Neil Adams. Okay, what do we have here? See, this is stuff that was meant to be put up in the window at comic book stores. and um, This is from 1983. You know, I don't know what the collector's market is on, I guess you'd call it ephemera. Ephemera meaning stuff that wasn't meant to be saved. This is promoting Black Orchid. It's just a little uh, thing like this. Another kitchen sink pipeline promoting Death Rattle. Uh, this is from 1987. I got two of them. There's one from 1988. Then DC used to have this little flyer called Direct Currents. I mean, I just, I don't know, I just save everything. I got a couple of copies of that. That's probably it. And it's like, all in a little folder here. But what's cool is I found all these homemade comic books that I made. Oh boy, I look. This light is probably too close to me. Oh shit. It's a really bright light. Um, okay, so. Did I date it? Yes, December 1974. Hmm. Well, this is the, the homemade comic book, or could possibly be school-made. This could have been made at school. Well, in this issue, Kooky Cat meets Kooky Cyclops. Well, this is the... These lights are ridiculous. God damn, I look horrible. All right. So, anyway. Um, Kooky Cat is published by Coke Group, December 1974. No tax. By Kenneth. Next issue on sale soon. 25 cents per copy. We hope you enjoy this comic book. San Antonio, Texas. So, there's Kooky Cat and the Cyclops. I mean, I could read. <clears throat> Last summer, I, I found some of my old comic books that I'd done, and I, 
I read them and I devoted two or three videos to it and those were some of my lowest rated videos as far as views ever. Let's say I have uh, posters of poor Beetle Bailey. So I don't know that you want to listen <clears throat> to me uh, read stuff from the mind of a third grader which I was in third grade when I cranked this out. So I've got the bulletins. This is my version of Stan Lee's Chatter. Hi folks, we have tons of new and great comic books and magazines. First we have Dracula Lives, number two, still on sale. Monsters Unleashed, number one, is on sale with the legend of Dracula and Frankenstein meets the living mummy. Face to face at last, it wasn't very original, was it? I was stealing titles from Marvel. There's a big battle. Yeah, everybody's shooting each other with arrows and knives. Very violent. Here's Kooky Cat meets Kooky Frankenstein. So they have a knockdown drag out fight, and then we've got Kooky Cat meets Kooky King Kong. I think one of my classmates thought it would be funny to have a character named Kooky Cat. And I think we did different versions. I did my version of Kooky Cat, and then he did his own Kooky Cat. And I think Kooky Cat was the was the main uh, character for our comic book company and instead of Marvel this uh, someone else in the group decided we'll call ourselves the Coke Comics group you know named after Coca-Cola damn what is that weird war tales look at that ad full of blood here it is war ghost here it is full of blood get it December 1974 What do we got here? Watch out, the thing is coming. Greater than Godzilla, mightier than King Kong. He's a... Damn, what does that say? He's a something monster. Here it is, folks. Yeah, the problem is doing it in pencil. Um, okay, this one. This one was done in ink. Vampire Tales. No, it wasn't done in ink. That's pencil. Just a little bit darker. What does that say? More blood than ever, it says there. Let's take a look at Vampire Tales number one from December of 74. And this has text stories. Wow. This is like a pulp created by third grader the monster of Mars uh, did you see that pulp illustration there the mystery of the mummy bloody creature oh and we have a house ad on sale now is the haunt of horror werewolves monsters vampires cyclops ghosts and more in the thrill pack pages of the haunt of horror only 15 cents you see these magazines that my mother didn't allow me to buy for the most part what it what it caused is for me to go and create my own so um 
ultimately her uh, her trying to squash my interest in this stuff only caused me to become more and more interested in it and create my own titles you know, if I couldn't own them I'd create my own I'd even copy the Marvel house ads that looks like that was traced right out of the comic Monsters Unleashed and then another bulletin sometimes I'd cut things right out of the San Antonio Light or the San Antonio Express News yeah like this here I, I took it I, I cut right out of the some horror movie ad I think this is the something I, I I forget what this movie's called or that I stole that stuff from kill crush destroy well that comes from lost in space that robot that wears the Superman suit here's Dracula lives It makes death worth living. I think I stole that from the Dracula Lives ad. On sale now is the Coke Comics cartoon Spiashel. And I just cut that right out of a TV guide or something it looks like. The only comic book special that has all of our cartoons. The best comic we've ever made. Letterman, Superman, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Spoof, Batman, Fault of Order, all packed in one special coming. Oh, here I spelled special right. Although it looks like I had to erase it and spell it correctly. Um, yeah, so. Here's Vault of Horror. Dracula's Bloody Terror. Now oh, that's a good panel there. Yeah. It just goes on like this. of the creators. Oh, and I was doing an adaptation of the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad before Marvel ever did their, theirs. Look, War is Guts on sale now. Instead of War is Hell, War is Guts. And we had a Planet of the Apes comic. And that might, this is 1974 Vault of Horror number two, that might predate the actual real Planet of the Apes comic that uh, Marvel, uh, magazine that Marvel did. Um, what else do we have here? Here's, um, this is from the 90s. Yeah, this is a little booklet promoting the upcoming Spider-Man animated series. Um, I need to bag and board this and put it with my Spider-Man comics. Um, Nineteen ninety-four. Yeah. Put it over here. What else do we have? Oh, yeah. I was telling you about this. You know, when I ordered um, autographed pictures from Lily Saint Cyr. Um, they never came, so I um, I had to I, I sent her a letter that she put an ad in like movie star new movie some film collector magazine. So um, I um, so I, I sent her a letter back and said, "Oh, the pictures never never came. They must must have gotten lost in the mail." So she sent me this handwritten letter. And it says, 
December 28, 1989. Dear Kenneth, thank you for getting in touch. It's nice to be remembered. I'm terribly sorry that you did not receive your photos. They were mailed out to you November 10th, according to my records here. Anyway, not to worry, enclosed the new set, and I hope you're pleased with them. They are for my collection of 50 different poses, so if you want others, they are available. You may select from the TAN 1990 chart. Uh, also, next time you write, could you please write your personal file number, blah, 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 on the order. Since I am my own secretary, this helps me locate info, etc., more easily. Your letter gives me the impression that you are a very sincere collector. So you may be interested to learn that 11, number 11C, strip, strip, strip tease, is the first photograph ever taken of me on stage. I was 17, so you have a real collector's item. Hope this finds you enjoying this new year. Love, Lily. And then I think I ordered another time, and, and I think the, the photos were late in coming again, so she sent me another letter. Dear Kenneth, once December 13th, 1990. Once again, I'm apologizing for sending your photos so late. I really did think the order had been sent out, so when your letter arrived, I was surprised. There must be some kind of jinx on us or something. Anyway, your pose is enclosed, and I'm sending two extra sets, six pics, as a little Christmas present to make up for the long delay and soothe your nerves. You asked about the new 1991 chart. I've decided to keep the collection as it is and not change until 1992, if then. This may be this may very well prove to be my last and therefore uh, permanent collection. I have marked a chart for you with the poses you ha you now have. So if you should decide to go ahead and get the remaining poses, just let me know. I'm giving you my personal private phone number, and and I won't read it. Even though she's passed away, it wouldn't matter if you had her. It doesn't anyway. I won't read it. In case you want to get in touch in the future regarding your Lily St. Cyr items in view of what has happened with these delays, it is important that I ask you to keep the number to yourself. Please understand. There are a couple of items now available. One is a tape of two of my burlesque stage presentations, Love Moods and Boudoir Secrets in color taken live on stage at the Follies Burlesque Theater in Los Angeles. This is a very rare tape. I had completely given up on ever acquiring it. Love Moods and Boudoir Secrets, $45. I hope this finds you well. Enjoying the holidays until later, Lily. So, that's cool. So, I've got two handwritten letters, and this is all the stuff I, I, I got from Lily St. Cyr on that when I was getting those pictures that you saw. You saw some of them in the home tour if you've been watching videos. Uh, this is a little flyer I used to get in the mail all the time from Sinister Cinema back in the VHS days before DVD came along and Sinister Cinema may have continued on doing DVD R's, I don't know, but this is their sale, 1994 sale, and they'd sell these exploitation movies. Some of them were in public domain or, or they just knew that no one was going to bother suing them. But they just put the stuff out, and it was this was these were hard to get movies back then. A lot of them aren't necessarily anymore. Uh, this is a little. I just made a copy of this to put up. Monster Go Go. Oh, what is this? Man, I got too many of these things. Comic Shop News, right? I I, I shouldn't be saving these because it makes no sense to save them. But then someday. No one will have saved them, and I'll be the only one that has them. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. When is this from? 2003. Which doesn't seem that long ago. Well, it's almost 20 years old. Uh, here's some artwork I did. This looks... Oh, this it's dated at the top, 1977. And it says, uh, does your dog bite, sir? Um, and the, there's the dog, yeah, all right, so. And of course the dog bites him, and I thought you said your dog didn't bite. And he says, he isn't my dog, and then I never finished it. I think uh, that joke was stolen from a Pink Panther movie. Not that it was original, to, <laughs> even then. 
And, you know, a lot of times I have these comics that I started and I never finished them. The Gory Adventures of Fantastic Man. This is from August of 78. This, my wife was three months old when I drew this. Uh, she was born in May of 78. See, I never finished it. Looks like he was going to be holding someone's arm. Hero of World War II. And so there's a Nazi there. And uh, he's back. Cracking the skulls of all Nazis. The greatest superhero of World War II. And it looks like I started the first page. Look at that, man. Wow. What's that? That's something else. What can I do about this lighting? It looks like everything's real. Oh, wow. What is going on there? I shoot him, but no blood, just wires and machinery. He's a robot. Well, hmm. Well, what is this? Oh, here's an ad. Maybe this was meant to go in the comic. I was a 98-pound weakling until I sent for Charles Globe's Fantastic Muscle Mania book. True story. And it says, One day I was walking to school and I was hit over the head with a baseball bat by a bully. While in the hospital, I looked through a comic book and saw an ad that changed my life. Wow, Charles Globe says he can give me a body like the Hulk. Ten days later. Oh, damn. I beat that bully to a bloody pulp. <laughs> Look at that. And he's saying, uh, the org. You too can be a gargantuan killer in just ten days. For a mere 10 bucks, order the book that will change your entire life. This is the damn book. Yeah. Allowed 30 to 40 weeks for delivery. Well, that was pretty accurate. Those comic book ads, it took a long time to get stuff. Oh, let's see, what do I have here? True Courage Magazine. August 78. I think that was a really prolific summer. August of 78. Um, I drew a lot of comics that summer. I had a burst of inspiration. If you only buy one comic book this year, it must be this one, it says. Terror times two. This lizard guy is ripping apart this astronaut. Special pinup page. Cut this page out and hang it on your wall. Here's another comic. The year 8197. Oh, there's a guy crying about this dystopian future that he's living in. It's after a nuclear war. Boy, that's a weird looking guy. Yeah. Anyway. If you want me to read these, 
to you and I'll be glad to do it in a future episode. Just let me know. Um, uh, looks like he finds a book from the past. America, the free country. But, oh, traitor, you're under arrest. He's learning about how that the America used to be free. Uh, looks like this is going to be an issue of Worlds Unknown. I must have been, I bet I was tracing right from the comic book. So that's why one of my issues of Worlds Unknown is uh, indentations where I've been uh, tracing. He's saying, go you prisoners, fall upon the torture spikes. Look at that guy, man. Yeah, this is a little bit earlier. I would. Uh, this is going to be about fourth grade, I would guess. And yeah, then this looks like, you know, junior high kind of drawing. Here's another cover done in July of 1978. See, there's the wanted poster, right? And there he is, dead. I really never was able to draw guns very well. And then we go back in time to 1974 for an issue of Spoof. Oh. Not not Spoof the Marvel comic. Spoof was the Spoof the baby vampire. His name was Spoof. This is like a heart my version of a Harvey comic. Because you know they had a ghost in Casper and a demon or devil and, and hot stuff and a witch in Wendy. So I thought, well, I'll create a baby vampire. See, and all this influence uh, from, um, you know, Harvey Kurtzman and putting little words and little things in the panels. You know, these were all assembled with tape. And, and the tape has actually held up pretty well um, almost 50 years ago. So, oh, oh, I didn't know how to spell Sinbad. It's Simbad. I was so obsessed with the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. That was drawn by my uh, older brother. Yeah. Oh, here's um, our unauthorized... Uh, we're going to... I did an unauthorized Batman comic. Look at that. What's going on there? Oh, Batman is uh, cutting off someone's head. Don't let Zack Snyder see that. He'll probably try putting that into his next movie. These damn uh, filmmakers have no idea. I mean, they just, you know, you know, uh, Tim Burton putting machine guns on the Batmobile and Zack Snyder doing the same thing. Have it. It, it makes no sense for Batman to use guns when the whole point of his... Uh, oh, well, you know the story. We are talking about group projects in the last episode and how schools oftentimes put you together with people that you hate and force you to do projects together. Well, if in a history class we had to do like a newspaper from ancient history. So we were doing ancient Egypt, right? And so it made a... A newspaper up and I photocopied a picture from the silent Ben-Hur I think that showed you know, yeah that showed uh, no it wasn't from Ben-Hur it was from uh, some Egyptian Cecil B. DeMille spectacles so I had an actual photograph for the front cover and and then I this was one of the ads I did for uh, that 
What does the eater of the dead have to say about Sphinx ketchup? When I, when I eat uh, evil people's souls, I like to wash them down with Sphinx ketchup. Well, it's the best ketchup this side of the Nile with eight flavors. Man. Souls go better with Sphinx ketchup. Wow. I bet the uh, teacher regretted giving that assignment. The world's last superhero, Captain Bloodshed. Yeah, on his chest it says blood and guts. Um, this monster is spitting. I guess trying to put out the stick of dynamite he's holding. Oh, this is older. And this is this is much older. This is from second grade. This was probably done as an assignment in class. I don't know. Frankenstein lives here. If you come in, he'll eat you. So this was on my uh, door in Hampton, Virginia, where I lived there in second grade, the 1972-73 school year. The Thing. Oh, this isn't my artwork. This was done by a friend of mine. This is not my artwork. It says by Samuel. Um, he later became a science teacher in San Antonio. The Coke Comics Group's newsletter, newspaper. Hey guys, this time we have some news in our Coke Comics group. So we made a newspaper, and this is it. The first thing we want to tell you is that Grant quit the club. I remember Grant. He says that we make baby books because he didn't get to make any superheroes. Of course, Mark makes them. But a new person has signed us, but a new person has signed up for the comics club, so we took Grant's place. So now we don't have to worry about that. And to top that off, Dracula, Dracula Lives is going to have 65 pages. Yes, the maker of Dracula Lives says so. It only costs 75 cents. Wow, what a bargain. A new co you know, we, ne we never sold them. We made one copy and we never sold them. We kept the comics, but if, if we had a way to print them, you know, if we had access to a photocopy machine, I guess we could have sold these to the other kids, but we were ahead of our time. So you buy that. Well, you don't have to, but there is more news, and that is good news, because the Coke Comics Group has won the first prize and the second prize. Wow. And soon we'll win the third prize, and maybe the fourth prize. It might even happen since Batman number one is such a success. But of course, Batman number one has Kookie Cat in it, so it won't be, so it won't be so great. Too bad. Mark said that he wanted Kookie Cat in it. We said no. He started to cry, so we let him. Well. So Grant left the Coke Comics group. Oh, this was also on my childhood door. Wanted some more blood. Come on in the room so Dracula can drink your blood. I really ought to frame that in the Frankenstein one. Oh, wow. I got a Star Trek comic. From uh, July of 78. That same summer. Set phasers on kill. He's dangerous. Based on the popular television series. An alien menace attacks the crew of the starship USS Enterprise. Let's see how close I uh, can make the characters. Oh, yeah. You know what? I used the um, Mego figures. I had them in front of me so I could get a likeness of the um, characters. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I copied them right. I just was at the the Mego figure right in front of me, so I could. Wow. Well, it looks like maybe I created Jar Jar Binks, and back in 1978, I should sue for royalties. From no, it's not quite. It's much better than Jar Jar Binks because the eyes are on real long stalks. I still think maybe I was copied there, but there we go. I was just drawing the Mego figure from the side. Oh, that's a pretty good illustration. For uh, 78, let's see. What was I? I was um, 12, 13 years old. I guess 13 when I was doing this. Next issue. Mr. Spock falls victim to an alien sickness and his skin begins to melt in terror times two. That must have been about the time the incredible melting man came out. I bet that was my inspiration. Oh, okay, well, at this time, you know, I was living in Arlington, Texas, or Gratuville. And I was no longer around my childhood buddies from third and fourth grade when we had the comics, so I, uh, when they had the Coke comics group. So I had formed my own one-man comics company, the Quality Comics. And uh, this is the Quality Bulletin. And there's our founder. That's me there. It's supposed to be me. What's going on in the comics biz by Kenneth M. Weiner. Welcome back. In 1973, an obscure little comic book company opened up in San Antonio, Texas. It was called Coke Comics Group. Sammy Glass was the head of it. They published comics like Kooky Cat and Crazy, but there was a problem. Only two people were in this company. Not long after it opened, I joined this group and made a comic called The Vault of Horror. On the front cover was a picture of a monster in a torn shirt, one eye in the middle of his forehead, fangs and blood streaming out of his mouth. By the side of him was a short vampire with an arrow through his stomach on the front cover and big letters that said, More Blood Than Ever. Inside were stories like Frankenstein Strikes Again, Monsters in the Deep, and a couple of other ridiculous drawings. By our standards, the artwork was pretty poor, but considering I was only in third grade, it was great. Needless to say, Sammy Glass and Mark, Cru uh, I believe his name was Krusenberger, uh, liked it and I became a member. Within a month, I had worked myself up to president. Vault of Horror lasted three crummy issues. It was printed on notebook paper and put together with tape. The second comic I made was Supernatural Thrillers starring the Headless Horseman. I got the idea out of a comic in my huge collection. Well, I created scores of other comics like Vampire Tales, last, last and only one issue, Werewolf by Night, Again, this lasted one issue. Batman, likewise. Plop, one issue. Spoof, the baby vampire. Kooky Cat, Ghost Rider, The Haunt of Bloody Horror. Star Trek, the front cover on this one, shows a giant space monster getting one of his fingers shot off by the phasers of the Enterprise. Crazy and Blood. <laughs> a comic called Blood. Someone ought to do that. I made many other comics, as did the other members of our group. I recall Mark making a 64-page comic called Dracula Lives. See, apparently I remembered that in 1978, but I have no recollection of that now. It's a good thing I wrote all this down. The peak of the comic, the, the peak of the Coke Comic Group's comic production was during 1974. All our comics were printed on notebook paper. I've still got every comic I ever made. We originally made these comics to sell, but when we got through with them, we liked them so much we kept them. We never had more than six members in our group. Occasionally, when we got angry, we'd fire a few members and hire some other guys who could draw a little bit. Our group was very secretive. We found an old abandoned clubhouse in a forest and declared it our secret headquarters. It was later destroyed by someone. I'll never know who did that. Yeah, it was near the airport. I've looked at it on Google Earth. They had this big ditch. I think they were digging. I never knew why they had this big ditch, but there was uh, some concrete. It kind of made a cave. Yeah, I remember that, and, and it was it was really cool. There was this wilderness area. I think they were building for some creek or something, ultimately some 
I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, I forgot that we had a clubhouse. That's cool. Uh, too bad, though. Too bad the clubhouse was destroyed. It had windows and a door. Really? Yeah, I think so. After two years of this group, I had to move to Washington. That's uh, Tacoma, Washington. I promised I'd keep in touch by writing, but the stupid movers lost Mark's address. I assume the group... But, like, 30 years later, I'd find him on Facebook and get back in touch with him. Which was really surreal. I, I assume the group went out of business, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're still making comics. If you're ever in San Antonio, you, you might meet them. Anyway, I'm reviving the group. It is June 1978. This time, instead of a ridiculous name like Coke, it's called Quality. I'm going to revise, revise some of the old comics I used to make in my Coke days, but with better artwork and scripting, I hope, as well as, a, as, well as create new titles like True Courage and Strange Science Fiction Tales. We want new members. If you'd like to join Quality Comics Group and make your own comics, or if you're just a good artist and want to do something creative, write Kenneth Leonard, Quality Comic Book Company, and then it has my address. And then I have an ad at the bottom for crazy. Read about that bumbling superhero, Superfink. Read takeoffs of your favorite movies and TV shows, and occasionally we'll have a ridiculous illustration by Madcap Mike. Mike was my brother. If you still don't want to buy it, buy it because it's funny. Well, 78... This is the really the sad part about this is now now I'm uh, alone in this uh, new town, and I yeah so uh, July '78 yeah I guess I'd been here two years so you know I'm talking about we need new members but I I had no I had maybe one or two friends that uh, that's just me going nuts during the summer completely alone and isolated um, um, this was done to imitate National Lampoon uh, National Lampoon put out a parody of a uh, Sunday newspaper and so um, and they and I did a parody this some of the dialogue is almost word for word from the the uh, peanuts parody except um, they called it, uh, they called Charlie Brown Weepy Whiner, and I, I took the same, I do it, I, I, I stole the dialogue, some of it, right from National Lampoon, but I made it a lot bloodier than the National Lampoon. You know, he gets beaten up savagely in the National Lampoon parody, but I, you know, I make it, you know, where he's been mortally wounded. And then, uh, Hugo the Terrible. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I did it on this kind of paper, so it would kind of look like a Sunday newspaper. Yeah, so here I've revived the kooky cat character that I did in third and fourth grade. Now it's with my more mature art style from, um, I guess... I guess I was about, that was the summer between 7th and 8th grade that I did this, to give you perspective. So, uh, Cookie Cat meets Donald Duck. Yeah. Well, I like to draw Howard the Duck, so I'm basically, it's supposed to be Donald Duck, but it looks like Howard the Duck. So that one, that was when Howard the Duck was pretty cool. Yeah. I guess I had a dream at that age that someday I would draw comic books, but I was never good enough. 
Bulletin. The first issue of Kooky Cat went on sale in December 1974. After the first issue went on sale, it was discontinued. Now Kooky Cat is back. We hope you enjoyed this issue, and you will keep buying this comic because the best is yet to come. At the bottom of this page is a picture of how Kooky Cat looked like in the first issue four years ago. Four years ago. December 74. So that was four years ago that... But now, oh, that's almost 50 years ago now, but at this point it was four years ago. Here's just some, I'm sure it's appropriate to be shown on YouTube. Um, I was obsessed with National Lampoon, and, uh, and here's, um, I think these were sketches. Um, yeah, you know, Pac-Man was popular in the arcades, so I've got little Pac-Man sketches, and and then you know that's probably inspired by the dog. You know, if you don't buy this magazine, we'll kill this dog. The famous uh, National Lampoon cover, and this was uh, oh, this is a sketch for we had to do a. a, a a thing for commercial art and this is from high school this is later so I did the sketch and, and I've got that art just in the other room oh here's a little sketch of Conan the Barbarian cutting a guy in half a guy whose jaw is hanging god damn I was warped what was wrong with me here's Corbin the Barbarian Take this, you filthy fiend. The bad breath barbarian battles the furry fiendish freaks. And he's, of course, he's saying spuff on the famous. Uh, this is earlier. This is September 77. So this is just a, a few months after Star Wars came out. So um, this is what. So this is um, the first month of seventh grade that I was doing this warp stuff. Krieg, ah, Corbin wins again. like he encounters a witch oh he's melting what is this uh oh on the last page he just just starting to be influenced by underground comics i was uh, aware of their existence from this book uh this book here, Comics, A History of Comic Books in America, gave me a taste of what underground comics look like. And National Lampoon, it, it, even, even as a seventh grader, I was starting to buy issues of National Lampoon at Lone Star Comics. I'm plugging in the phone so it doesn't die of... Um, here's the first issue of The Vault of Horror. Now we're going back to the days in San Antonio. This is uh, did I date it? This has to be uh, that says uh, Vault of Horror is published by Coke Comics Group. This is the first issue. We don't want people. Actually, it says we don't want Pia Pole to waste money, so we have no tax. San Antonio, Texas. So anyway, that's, uh, I wish I had gone over the pencil with ink and not used just notebook paper. But it's all I had. This was done by my older brother. Want to be blood pals? Spoof is the world's funniest vampire. 
I like making my own house ads. Monsters Unleashed. Of course, at least we would steal characters from other companies. Dennis the Menace. And that was also done by my older brother, which is quite good, I think. I still... I haven't heard from him in several years. Here's Vomit Magazine. Boy, I'm bored. He's about to be hit by a one-ton weight. 35 cents, July 78. It's uh, Ronald Duck and the Sniper. Now this is reflects, there was one story in, I think it was in Creepy Magazine, and it was the most twisted, I don't know who drew it, it might have been Neil Adams, it was like a big name that drew it, and it was about a sniper, and it showed, um, it just showed this guy shooting people from the top of a building, and it, it was so sick, it, it just, um, and I think I'd seen that, and that inspired me to do this, and I, you know, I, I don't know. I think a lot of the stuff I was reading was probably not that good for me in retrospect, you know. Uh, but oh well, uh, disgusting dummy, the giant. Here's an issue of, there's Crazy Magazine number three, making fun of modern art. It's the modern art issue. And this is a parody of uh, The Gong Show. comic and then Charlie Brown I guess does a comedy routine and just another piece of modern art and this says uh, you're supposed to guess what this modern art is and it says it's a Dodge pickup truck at the bottom Now think hard about this one. The other two were easy, but this one is hard. What is this a picture of? Don't jump to conclusions. Oh, all right, look at that. Oh, this stuff is just too twisted. Super Fink, August of 1973. Super Fink. Super Fink meets King Kong. At this point, I hadn't even ever seen King Kong. Uh, I never, I didn't see King Kong, the real King Kong, the Willis O'Brien King Kong, until a couple of weeks before the remake came out, and that would have been uh, maybe November of '76. They aired it on Channel Eight, which is uh, WFAA, the local ABC affiliate. They ran it in prime time because there was so much anticipation for that. Uh, remake that came out with Jessica Lang that was uh, just awful but the great thing about the remake is it allowed me to be exposed finally to the real King Kong and that was one of those life-changing moments like seeing um, the seventh uh, voyage of uh, Sinbad Here's um, Crazy, Crazy Magazine. A roadrunner that turns into a vampire devours cities in our funny tale, I was a teenage roadrunner. I was a teenage roadrunner. See, I, I didn't finish. See, I guess I would tape a bunch of uh, paper together, and then uh, it would be funny. 
<laughs> you know, it would be funny is if I just took over, you know, almost 50 years later and just finished it. You know, I don't know. Because it's just blank. <sighs> Crash Kringle and the Air Pirates. This, I would think, was done. This is probably. I bet this was done in like sixth grade or something. It, maybe seventh grade. I didn't date it. What is Super. What is Super. What is super Santa Claus is saying on Slasher and Flasher, on Pansy and Bitchin'. On Vomit, on Stupid, on Bummer and Nixon. Let's see, and Santa Claus has got like a rocket sled. What's happening there? Capitalist swine? Toy monger? This reflects... This reflects National Lampoon influence. Here's... Um, the bootleg Dennis the Menace. It's even got a value stamp from the supermarket up there. Instead of the comics code, I put one of these things there. Texas Gold. Used to get them at HEB Supermarket down there in San Antonio. This is from 1973. Big deal. Man, it looks like it's copied right out of the real comic. And it's, again, it's not finished. They're not too high, they're not tall enough. Oh my gosh. The Cookie Jar. 20 years ago, Dennis the Menace appeared in his first magazine. Mr. Ketchum, assistant artist. Mr. Ketchum's assistant artist was to improve with practice. And when and we no longer get dentists involved in such dangerous situations. Book number one is not a collector's item. Oh, okay, well, I copied that straight out of uh, um, one of, an old Dennis the Menace comic. They reprinted the first issue of Dennis the Menace, and they said, hey, you know, back then we, we had it a lot more fun. But this is cool. Uh, I was trying to do my own monster ad. Oh, wow. Mon but I didn't, looks like I didn't really finish it. Monster House. Monster hands, wear these and be the monster of the block. Fake BM looks real as hell. Yeah, my, my mom called shit BM for bowel movement. I don't know if any other mothers did that. Look, uh, vampire poster, hang on wall. I don't know what that's from. I took that out of the newspaper. One dollar monster from space. Seven feet tall, looks real, looks real. Who's to be the next victim? Frankenstein mask. Bloody soap. Smear some of this powder on a bar of soap. When someone begins to use the soap, it will foam, it will turn their hand and face bloody. Oh, and then I've got a toy, Mike Weiner. It looks real, I think. That's my brother. So, yeah, this is my way of, uh, what does that say? Claws. Eerie claws. Wear on your hands. Yeah, that's cool. I did my own monster product ad. The Thrill of Violence. April 1979. He's saying, you ass, you'll pay for making me lose my legs. Oh, it's only a front cover. There was never a comic produced. Here's weird science fiction tales. Oh, he's blowing him. He's blowing his guts out. Yeah, this guy is uh, it's horrible. 
Then there's a horrible uh, war, aliens attacking cities. All earthlings shall die at our hands. Oh, look, they blow up the earth. I kind of like that illustration. Conan the Librarian. This was not drawn by me. Oh. This was drawn by me. This was not drawn by me, but by a friend. Strange. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, they're trying to get me to join the Honor Society. Because I was such a great student. What is this? Oh, I must have done this in typing class. We're trying to come up with songs with love in the title and change them to, whenever it said love, change it to lunch. Because, you know, that's all we were thinking about in high school was when do we go to lunch. All you need is lunch. If you want my lunch, you've got it. Endless lunch. Lunch is the answer. Your lunch is driving me crazy. Crazy little thing called lunch whole lot of lunch, lunch rules, lunch stinks, can't buy me lunch for your lunch, luncheon, touching, squeezing, young lunch, puppy lunch, first lunch, living luncheon, she's just a woman, lunch Jones, ain't talking about lunch, all my luncheon, P.S. I lunch you, lunch me tender, Rhapsody of lunch, making lunch, Sweet mystery of lunch. Lunch is like a rock. So, this you have to be extremely bored to produce something like that. Thank you, Arlington High School. Ghost Rider, 1974. This is a, a one of a kind issue. I should send it off to CGC. <laughs> Imagine if someone said something like this in the CGC. Um, what grade will you give this? It says it's published four times a year. Well, it's a big splash page. This guy's about to go over a cliff. We got some monster attacking, I guess, here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, there's the Ghost Rider's first appearance. Got a little bit of color in there. I must have had access to a map pencil for the blood. Oh, and it has a, uh, um, an ad for Conan the Barbarian. He must be fighting an invisible barbarian there. Conan, yeah, Conan meets the invisible barbarian. And then there's the bulletin telling you about the latest issues on sale. Ooh, here's the house ads. There's one for Tales of the Zombie. Beware, once again, the zombie has risen from the grave, and these are the fearful features he's swinging your way. I'm sure that's all word for word from the original ad. And here's one for Dennis the Menace. Hey, stupid, Dennis, is on, Dennis the Menace is on sale. Only 20 cents. The one that does everything wrong. And he's saying, the devil made me do it. Have your laughs have your laughs out of it on sale soon but you got a full page ad for conan the barbarian on sale soon is conan the barbarian look at that pretty cool 
pretty cool. Here's Mad Magazine. You ever see this issue? It's like printed on like, it's like this thin paper like you'd have in an old Bible. Mad Magazine contents. The Vampire. Here's a parody of Land of the Giants. This is going to be second grade. I guarantee you, second grade. Yeah. This is one of the first homemade comics I did. Here's, um, it looks like there's a missing page that it was torn out. Yeah, this has had things torn out of it. Dennis the Menace is like squirting this guy and he says, he started it, he smacked my head with that hammer. Yeah, that's hilarious. There was a Poseidon Adventure parody, but there's like something torn here. I don't know what happened. Star Trek parody. Um, that's a little mysterious. That may have been done in third grade actually. This looks like something I saved for my binder, probably high school. Yeah, that's a little, that, that artwork's a little bit more sophisticated. What do we have here? I think this might have been Hollywood Squares, maybe. This um, must be from typing class, and I was um, trying to be funny, I guess. Mr. Vic Butcher, 4777, Snodgrass Avenue, Hiroshima, Japan, 69696. Mr. Butcher, we are most pleased to announce that you have been awarded the prestigious Fat Ass of the Month Award given each year at this time by the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Congratulations! You are now among the select few who have received the award since our founder, Ed Fist, awarded the first one to Mr. Dick Munch in 1928. You have been chosen from among literally thousands of jerk-offs around the world. We chose you because of the amazingly vast amounts of layers of fat that make your ass the ninth wonder of the world. We examined countless photographs of assholes, but none of them seemed quite right until we saw your awesome tush. The long blonde hair streaming out of your butt clenched it. You are a dick. Blow it out your ass. H microphone. Mr. Microphone. I should frame this and put it on the wall. Is there another? Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Just boredom in high school. Major Vic Mayhem III, 6969 Poontang Terrace, Scrotum, Ohio, 98765. Dear asshole, you are a pathetic, sniveling, rat-faced son of a bitch. When the damn fucking doctor delivered you, he probably slapped your mother. Why, well, I bet quite a few penises have rotted off while inserted in your mother's diseased evil cunt. It is a well-known fact that your scumbucket mother is a cheap dime store floozy who drinks rubbing alcohol. And as for your father, he's not exactly a winner himself. He died 20 years ago because the animal shelter had to put him to sleep. That's enough about your bestial family. Let's discuss the inferior child molester that occupies your body. You are really a... You are a really incredibly selfish prick. You were born in 1942 in a Shell gas station. When you were seven months old, you bit your own dick off. At eight months, you were biting other children's dicks off, which made you quite unpopular with the rest. 
Why am I wasting my time writing to a fart like you? I got better things to do. Fuck off. Eat me. Vic Mayhem. Major Mayhem. Typing class. Arlington High School. Oh, here's some classwork. Which factors influence intellectual ability as measured by IQ tests? Genetic factors, environment, A and B, none of the above. It looks like I answered I answered B and I got it wrong. Yeah, well, what is this shit? Um Oh, 1981. I wish to thank you for the opportunity of displaying your painting in my office and to commend you for your creativity. The artwork not only serves as a visual statement of the quality of the art program in the Arlington Public Schools, but also as a source of pleasure to those who visit my office. I wish I could share all the appreciative comments with you as you have shared your beauty with us. I hope you will continue to develop the visual awareness and skills so evident in your painting. Sincerely, Kenneth M. Green. This is the superintendent of the school. I had, I guess, my art was in his office. <clears throat> this is a petition that we created in high school. You know. <sighs> okay, this was definitely second grade. This issue of Mad. I guess that's Dennis the Menace, and that's supposed to probably be Alfred e. Newman. Let's see. Yeah, I cut pigs. That must be the film Pigs. Um, if comics belong to Mad, so I, I, I use some comics right out of the newspaper. And then I created some of my own. Oh, Mad looks at karate. Yeah, I love blood. There's King Kong versus Godzilla. Mad looks at peanuts. Let's read what it says. Empty, oh hell, Charlie Brown. My, my dish, my dish. Hey, what's this? And he sees a Dracula magazine. Dracula ate someone. Ew, Count Dracula fell on the toilet. Hey, that gave me an idea. Dracula gets lots to eat, so I'll be a vampire. Okay. So. Hey man, like arg. Ah, prey. Okay, so. Looks like the little Snoopy vampire Snoopy is going to feed on Linus. And he's scared. Hey man, like Eek. He's uglier than I thought. I guess a vampire's life isn't for me. And this was done by my older brother. This page, I, I remember that. Frankenstein movie takeoff. This one is um, pretty thick. Homemade comic book. Maybe because I, I cut stuff right out of the Sunday paper. Here's Cowboy Bob. Yeah, yeah. The humor of a second grader. One of these days, I'll kill you. Oh, ha ha. Oh, BM, you mean you're going to die. Look behind you. Well, that was my older brother's art. A bit of uh, Don Martin influence. Oh, yeah, and he did this page, too, and that's completely Don Martin influenced. And then he did that. 
and he also did this. And then it looks like I just reprint Hagar the Horrible. And, uh, yeah, well, that's, um, that's mad. Oh, this is from my Spanish class, 1982. And this is my high school graduation. May 22nd, 1983, 8 p.m. Earlier that afternoon, I went and saw Return of the Jedi. Um, I think that was opening day, maybe? I think that's the case at the Forum Mall. Here's a chest burster from Alien. So that's from 78. There's some kind of wrecked spaceship that I drew. Oh, here's some uh, <laughs> mailer from Robert Tilton Ministries. Remember him? We were highly entertained by him. Here's Incredible Universe, a receipt from Incredible Universe. It was some story that Tandy created. It was supposed to be a huge... Um, um, oh... These, this is receipt for two laser discs, uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which was that was forty eight ninety five, and Elvira was thirty three ninety five. These laser discs were expensive, and looks like I had to return Monty Python and the Holy Grail because it didn't play right. Here's a uh, kind of illustration I did a lot in elementary school. Here's an illustration of Spider-Man. I think this was supposed to be my father. Pretty sure. I wrote down the cast of Lost in Space. I must have been trying to create a new superhero team here. Rockhead, Morris the Cat, Mr. Bubble, and Harry, who's a shampoo salesman. Here's another comic book flyer, Eclipse Extra, April 1985. It's like I was starting to, you know, sometimes I'd start these comics and I only get about two panels into them. This, I didn't even finish one panel. And this is a this is probably right after Star Wars came out. I guess Luke has been uh, hurt. You know, this is um See the great new movie, The Great Gas Bag. Must have been a parody of, of Great Gatsby, but actually the back of it's kind of cool. If you put that in a binder now, it would look really cool. Sometimes, uh, you know, something like this would have never been saved, except for I was saving this. Now I'm more impressed with what's on the back of it. There's some people fighting. Oh my gosh, what kind of garbage things? And I think this is the guy, this is a drawing of an elementary school friend, and I think he died. Um, I think that was him. I may be wrong. 
if it wasn't him, forgive me, but there was one of my friends. Um, well, what I remember is I, I, I went out, I got on my bike and I opened the garage door, got on my bike and all these people were heading down the street. Crowds of people were rushing down the street. So I followed on my bike to see what was going on. And there were people were all clustered on a cul-de-sac uh, and there was a ditch down at the end of the cul-de-sac and, and high tension wires and they were bringing someone up to the ambulance and apparently my father was one of the people carrying the stretcher because he had heard an explosion I never heard it but that caused him to leave the house and go down the street and then he helped the and, and what I remember seeing was a figure of a kid and it was just scorched black. There was, I mean, it was roasted horribly. And I didn't know, but later I found out it was like one of my friends. And he'd been flying a kite with a, um, instead of a string, a wire. And it hit the high tension wire and it just caused an explosion. And, and he, um, he passed away in the hospital. That was uh, third or fourth, probably fourth grade, yeah. So anyway, another. You've heard of Dracula, and of course you've heard of Blackula. Now feast your eyes, all four of them, on Blechula. Plus, Marvel takes on Marcus Wilby. Oh, I'm just like parroting right out of uh, the real spoof a comic book that Marvel put out. Here I'm creating more characters. I'm sure there's a lot of licensing I could get out of this intellectual property. Huh? This was probably going to be a detective. Oh, here I am drawing a um, wacky package. This is a um, flyer for some band called Warrior. And it says, if Pantera's Metal Magic is released by show, da show date, it will be sold at the beer stand. Because um, Pantera was a local band. Um, they came basically from my high school. This was uh, me tracing the cover of one of my favorite comics that I traded a friend for, which was this issue of Crazy, which is a Marvel comic book, which actually reprinted an issue of Not Brand Eck from the 60s, and it's wonderful Marie Severin art uh, with parodies of the Fantastic Four, the first issue of Fantastic Four, and Superman. Here is a excellent, because uh, it says, Kenneth Weiner, fourth grade, Mrs. Claus. So, that causes me to remember the name of my fourth grade teacher. Who will survive and what will be left of them? That's from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre poster. This is the someone writing about Ricky Nelson. He passed away. I, I was looking everywhere for Ricky Nelson records and I finally found the greatest hits of Ricky Nelson. And then I went to a party that night and uh, he crashed on uh, New Year's Eve in an airplane, much like Buddy Holly, except Buddy Holly wasn't freebasing. So um, I almost thought, gee, that's creepy that I buy the record. And then that happens. Here's another official petition from high school. We, the members of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, request to have a human sacrifice on February 28th in the Arlington High School gym. This is the only day that the planets will be in the proper alignment for a savage butchery of human life during all of 1983. We want a student council member to be put to a slow death while his or her horrible screams echo off the cold gym walls. We sign our names below without fear. And there's a lot of real names signing. <laughs> a lot of real people signed. <laughs> 
there's fake names too, but, but I don't think there really was someone named Max E. Pad. And then there was someone named F. U. C. K. Oh, this is a friend of mine did this. Look at this illustrator. He was really talented. He signed it Norman Rockwell. But he actually does uh, he does the advertising for Six Flags over Texas for the Six Flags company. So he, he would do these uh, illustrations for me. And sign them Norman Rockwell. I had to have those framed. He probably hasn't seen these since they were done in the 80s. I need to uh, take pictures of them and send it. Actually, I'm going to do that. Let me uh, put these aside so I can take a picture and send it to him. He will be amused. Amused, I tell you. Uh, I'll put them over here. What do we got here? Uh, this is some kind of... That's an interesting flyer. I'll look at that later. All right. What's this? Oh, this was this guy, George Gamark, who did... Um, he was a local DJ, played new wave and punk music. Book of Poems. How sensitive. The flood. The flood, the flood. The blood, the blood. Yea, what a day. May I go out and play? The flood, the flood. The blood, the blood. I could have been Dr. Seuss. The calendar. I don't have a calendar. Someone went and ate it. But I don't care at all because it wasn't dated. And he's saying, come back here, you moron. The Mighty Oak. Don't worry if your days are long and your friends are... I'm sorry. Don't worry if your days are long and your rewards are few. Remember that the Mighty Oak was once a nut like you. Okay. Those two poems I copied from somewhere. I think, you know, the one about the flood, obviously, I wrote. Uh, this one I wrote. This is very much my work. Roses is red. Roses are red, violets are blue. Every time I look at you, I throw up and poo. It says, I, I killed you. <laughs> what is this? Who wrote this? What is this shit? This is some, Kenneth, this is. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. This is a, this is a girl wrote this for my, uh, my, my, uh, I put a, I put together a parody of the school newspaper when I was in college. And this girl named Laura wrote this. She was this punk rock girl. She wrote this to, for me to publish it. I, I don't think I ever did. Um, she made a documentary about Texas punk rock, and I've never seen it. I need to get in touch with her. In fact, I'm going to take a picture of this and send this to her because I'm friends with her on Facebook. I haven't talked with her in years. She sat next to me in uh, art in high school, and uh, this is a flyer I made for a party. The uh, second annual Ed Gein Memorial Halloween Party and Beatles Reunion. This is the kind of flyer I would do for these parties that we would do in college. The Mystery of Boris Karloff's Unopened Safe. Ooh, look, a little paper doll of Frankenstein. Oh, come on, the light is hitting him wrong. Is the light catching him wrong there? This 
<laughs> I just thought this was hilarious. Rotting corpse. Thrash. All posers will die. Total death thrash speed hardcore metal. I didn't draw this. I just found it at a record store. And I've kept... I used to have it hanging on the wall. I thought it was so funny. That thrash goals. This was this was a place where Pantera, I'm sure, played a million times when they were still nobodies. Humor, gore, and hit film. Oh, look at the back. There's an ad for the Longhorn Ballroom, which is uh, famous for being where uh, the Sex Pistols played. It was a country. <laughs> they chose a country bar to uh, play in. Um, Did I show you this already? I got all these damn things. This is from Kitchen Sink Comics. Just a flyer promoting Xenozoic Tales. I got several of them. Here's some band flyers. Uh, May 10th. Uh, Scratch Acid 3 on a Hill. Oh, it's two-sided. And this side is... Uh, that's cool. That way they could hang it on a, on a window in a bar and then either side is promoting something. Thursday Night Hog Scramble with the Shitty Beatles. The Profit Bar. Um, the Profit Bar is where I saw Screaming Jay Hawkins perform. I wonder if that's still open. I don't know. Yes, indeed. Profit. What the hell was that? Oh, it's another one of these le these uh, insulting letters that we uh, did in typing class. Oh, this is a sketchbook, you know. And I was doing this is where I was getting the paper to do these comics back in the seventies. It's a Wild West issue of Insanity Magazine. So these are just sketches, that, things that never came to fruition. Here's a folder from elementary school. Comic books and magazines. There's a wacky package. Oh, I, had, I, still, I still have all of them. I shouldn't say I had so many. I have so many wacky packages and many duplicates. Because there'd always be one or two stickers that they didn't print many of, and you'd have to keep buying the wacky package packs with the hopes that you'll finally get those stickers and and then you wind up with tons of duplicates. Um, one was called Monotony. It was a parody of Monopoly. That one was incredibly hard to get. And then another one was um, Truant Cigarettes. Instead of True, I believe the cigarette brand was called True. It was Truant. That was a hard one to get. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got in here. It's intriguing. Oh, I got a... This one is a comic book done by my friend Sammy. Problons. And it was just little humor things. Watergate. He was uh, an interesting guy. He's now a science teacher down in San Antonio. He, um, whenever I went to visit, we would trade comics and, and stuff. Uh, when I went to visit him, I'd have to take my shoes off and, and wear socks because uh, his father, his father was much older. I assumed that his father met his mother maybe after World War II because his mother was Japanese and and that's why we had to take our shoes off when we went in. So that was my uh, 
first um, counter with that. Oh, and he did this great werewolf. You know, I wish I could get in touch with him. I could send him pictures of some of this artwork he did, but looks like, uh, yeah, he did a, this is all his artwork here. Um, did I? I think I, I, I think I did this. Sometimes it's hard to tell because it's just a Don Martin imitation. Um, of course, this is from uh, taken from EC's uh, Mad Mickey Rodent. This is my friend's art for sure. Yeah. This one definitely is. He was really good. We both had a common obsession with monsters and with Star Trek. Yeah, man, his artwork's good. Maybe it was copied from somewhere, but this is really good for like a third or fourth grader. I didn't know I had this artwork of his. This is definitely my artwork. We'd go over there and we'd just draw comics for hours and hours. And then we, ooh, this is a sticker I got from a, like a quarter machine, you know, and it's, uh, and then I got this, the this eye came from a Halloween sticker pack and that's pretty damn cool. That's worth, a, worth framing. Yeah, this is more artwork done by my friend Sammy. Ooh. And then, look at this, the mighty snore. Damn, I'm really impressed with this artwork that I haven't seen in 50 years. I can't imagine what I thought of it at the time. I, I, um, I, I remember it's coming back to me now in this distant memory how thrilled I was that I got to keep his artwork because I really liked it and oh he was making tarot cards holy shit these were this was a really gifted kid that I was hanging out with uh, I see that now and uh, he this whole book of dogs German Shepherd and now you know he's an award-winning uh, teacher uh, science teacher and I know he became that because you know Mr. Spock is a collie I don't know maybe he took the, these ideas from some book St. Bernard but it's just real good and this thing's thick it just keeps going on and on Doberman Pinscher or if he does a beagle Hold on. Okay. Wonder how many people are, are have gotten to this point. <laughs> An hour and forty three minutes in. Um, hell, I'd watch this if someone was showing me old artwork from the seventies. Uh, I'd be watching it. But yeah, here's another piece of artwork done by him. Really good stuff. Really. Really good stuff. Oh, I did this. This is my my uh, my own wacky package idea. Lizzie Borden flavored. Lizzie Borden milk. It's blood flavored. Of course, when I was in third grade, I think there was a Lizzie Borden movie, TV movie that came on the air, and everyone was talking about it the next day. Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched played Lizzie Borden. <clears throat> and everyone on the playground was talking about that, you know, Lizzie Borden had to uh, clean the blood off, so she, I guess she got into the tub, and you could maybe see her nude from behind, you know, just a TV movie, she didn't see anything, but to uh, those kids at Regency Place Elementary School, it must have been, this is, uh, <laughs> this is done by my friend, so I wasn't the only warped person. The, 
This guy is great. I just... And it looks like here he's uh, he's taken this from the EC uh, the EC Mad comic. But this is just amazing. What he did, and of course streaking became very popular back in the seventies. It looks like this whole folder is mostly his artwork that I cherished and then have just forgotten about. Look at this bloody dinosaur he drew. Man. I just... There's Billy Betts and St. Shazam and turning to a pile of cinders. Oh, here's his, he's drawing a bunch of monsters here. And oh my God, this, oh my God. What I'm seeing here, I've forgotten about. I am. Um, a friend of mine had an old comic from the 60s, and it had an ad for Not Brandach. He didn't want to give up the comic book, so he cut the page out with a Not Brandach full-page ad, and I, he might have sold it to me for 10, 15 cents or something, but here it is preserved in this folder. And I wonder what comic it came from. Uh, maybe one of you could help me identify what comic this ad was from full page ad for not brand Eck. and on the back I need to frame this is this grit ad in this order by mail ad and uh, then at the bottom you've got this POW sticker and a wacky package and one of these uh, Odd Rods stickers. I'd so much forgotten this. Oh, wow. Here I am uh, drawing. Uh, this is that model kit. Um, um, I must have traced it off the model kit box. This is my brother's werewolf art. What else do we have here? Okay, now this says, well, you better not cry, you better not fret. Something weird's going to happen this year. The Incredible Bulk is coming to town. He's picking his nose in public. He's killing the human race. He's putting spray deodorant on his ugly, ugly face. So you better watch out if you're a superhero, because the odds of you winning a fight with him is 100 to 0. The Bulk is coming to town. He's really, really strong. He's built, beating the Silver Burper. He's smashing down, <laughs> he's smashing down buildings, because he's got a bad temper. So shut the doors and windows, because he might kill you. Gulp! He's beaten the writer of this song to a bloody pulp. So, this is see, this is how much this comic influenced me. See, I'm not calling him the Incredible Hulk. I'm calling him the Incredible Bulk, and the Silver Burper. This I must have been trying to do my own not brand act comic. See. This is elementary school. This looks like trying to do Dick Tracy villains. Because the uh, DC put out a treasury 
collector's edition, big tall tabloid treasury edition type thing of Dick Tracy reprints and I got that and was and fell in love with Chester Gould's art. What is this thing? A Scottish boy. I would say this is second grade, possibly first grade. Oh yes, the cat in the hat. Now I hear that eBay is uh, taking people trying to sell those six books that uh, Dr. Seuss wrote that uh, are supposed to be horribly offensive. Now people that have those up as listings on eBay, they're taking the listings down saying they're too offensive. You got Aquaman, Captain America, the Green Goblin, the Human Torch, and Mr. Fantastic. Oh, this was done by my friend Sammy. Again, very excellent art. Wow, I am getting smart. That's my art. This, I think, I copied from one of those magazines like Dynamite or Bananas, one of those comics that they sell, uh, I think. Or maybe it was from Crazy. It was copied from somewhere. The ones I'm not showing you are just like, you know, Don Martin copies. Here's one of those blue meanies. Looks like some poetry about zombies. Wow. What else have we got in here? Oh. Forbidden Books and Coffee. And Dallas was a place I would hang out at almost every night. Um, and and uh, they just made amazing calendars. I should take pictures of these. May and June. This is probably, uh, I would say, 1990, 91. Well, that was a cool find. What we got here? Bunch of clippings from newspapers, it looks like. What do we have? 